Michael's products are aesthetically pleasing. Right? They look really nice, right? they're light, they look really cool. But what else do you guys know about Apple's products? That, you know, other than the price. So we know that the price is high, but let's talk about why, why can they charge that price, right? What, what else do you think of when you think of Apple's? Are there, so the iPhone, right? Is it, is it very difficult to use? Mm -hmm. It's really pretty easy to use, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So don't you think that's important? Yeah. Right? Easy to use, right? What happens, you guys have seen Macintosh computers, right? Macs? What happens, you just turn it on, everything's there. You don't have to, there's no viruses, right? Mm -hmm. Super easy to use, it's super simple, it makes sense, right? So these are two really powerful things. They can always say, we look the best, and we're the easiest to use. And no one else can really make the same claim. Listen, I have an iPad. The Samsung Galaxy is five times better than my iPad, right? But the iPad is just, you know, it's really, really easy to use. All the things that I need it for, right? I, I can watch movies on it, I can language practice, right? It's really, really simple. Right? And so, I mean, the other thing is also on most Apple devices, you have the most applications, right? You have all these apps that are really easy to use, right? And that's because, and that's like a benefit that they have that's like a side benefit, right? Because the thing is that they became so successful that everyone who creates apps for iPhones or like iPads, right? They w it's the biggest market, right? Mo people, what is the phone that's used the most in the world right now? The iPhone, basically. I mean, the iPhone is basically like one of the most popular phones. What is the most popular tablet? It's the iPad by far, right? The Samsung Galaxy is a better tablet. It's a much, much better tablet. You can get HD video, you can stream, you can record HD video with it. It's, a, it's an unbelievable device. But the thing is that the iPad is just, you know, it's these two qualities, not only are they able to sell a lot, right, but they're also able to charge really high prices for it. Because they can always say, no one looks as good as us, and no one is as easy to use as us. This is two things that they can always say. And to people who, not just, you know, a lot of us are pretty good at using technology, right? If something goes wrong with your phone, you can fix it, right? But, you know, think about your grandmother, right? Think about your, your mom, even, right? Or your, your mom and your dad. They're not, you know, they're people who are in their 50s, you know, 50s, 60s. Are they good with technology? Are they, right? They're, they're kind of bad, right? So think about how easy, you know, if they want to, so Minsu, if your parents want to talk to you, right, and if you guys both have iPads, right, look at how easy it is. You just open it, you hit FaceTime, you, you hit Minsu, and then you guys are just looking at each other and talking. That's how easy it is, right? So this gigantic, remember we were talking about markets, right? Who is your market? They basically, their technology products, that became, their market became everybody. Because a lot of people are pretty stupid, right? They don't really know how to use technology. Like, I mean, not really stupid, I shouldn't say that, but they're kind of like, they're just not used to it, right? But I can teach my grandma, who's like 78 years old, I can teach her how to use an iPad. Here, grandma, touch this, hit my name, and then look, it's calling me. There, hey grandma, you know. So those are two things that they can really claim, right? So this is something that, once again, focus on quality. Don't worry about who came out with it first, right? Blizzard did not create the first online games, right? StarCraft is the most famous like strategy game in the world. But there were games before StarCraft that were really, really popular. They saw what those games were doing, and they perfected it, right? And then they came out with StarCraft. They focused on quality, right? Other, there were games that were out for three, four, five, six, seven years before that, right? But none of them were as popular as StarCraft, because StarCraft took all the things that those games did well, put them together in one package, and then you got StarCraft, right? So that's something that's like really, really interesting. So great, so this is once again, were there, now, uh, one thing I just want to go over really quickly, were there words that you guys didn't understand, or like words that you were not able to find the meanings to, or that you wanted to ask me about, because I can help you figure out what, what all the meanings are. Just throw, throw any words out there that you had difficulty understanding. Over, um, Overarching. Overarching. Overarching, yeah. Okay. Overarching means covering, right? Overarching. You, you know what an arch is, right? Yes. An arch is basically like a structure like this, right? It covers everything, right? So something that's overarching
means it covers everything. Okay? Do you get it? Does it make sense? Yes. When I, when I saw the end, the arching, because of, of, yeah, of the of McDonald's, that we call Yeah, the McDonald's, the golden arches, right? Yeah, it's golden so arches. it's like a lot of English words are like that, right? You just have to think about the picture, right? But the word has uh, some one of the meaning of slang. That means something is valuable than everything. So it has uh, another meaning. It does, but I would say, th well, the overarching theme in this case is also, like, it, it can be, in this case, when you say overarching theme, it's the most important theme. So yeah, Minsu, you're right. In this context, overarching theme, these two words together, it means most important theme, right? So you guys can take notes while most important theme, when they say overarching theme. Right? The most important thing. Do you guys get that? Does that make sense? Right? What are some other ones? And, uh, sorry, after I gave you guys this article, I realized that there was a lot of hard words. But it's good, because this way you guys are forced to learn. What are some other ones? Um, I don't understand. Cross-pollinated. Yeah. Cross-pollinated. OK. That, that's a good one. OK. So you know flowers, right? Like, pollination is the process by which like flowers you know, how, <coughs> you know how flowers basically mate, right? You know how bees, so you have like a flower, right? And like a, a, a bee goes there and then like goes to another flower, right? And they, the pollen from one flower, right, goes to another one. And this is how they create like yeah. see fruit and everything, right? Automatical reproduction. Yeah, the, the reproduction process. Do you guys remember from like biology class when you were kids? How do flowers reproduce, right? They reproduce through pollination, right? So what was that again? Was that in the first? In the, sec in the second paragraph, the last, the third line to last. Okay, I'm just taking a Second paragraph, the third line. Is it last. over here? Or like this Especially part? when cross, oh, yeah. the second paragraph. Oh, OK. Yeah. Especially wait, wait, cross pollen. Think of the strategy as smart recycling of internal ideas in and engineering, especially when cross-pollinated with other products, right? So for instance, the iPad, right? So look at this picture, right? You know how, you see how these two are becoming connected, right? Because the bee is going to one, taking the pollen from this flower and taking it to another flower, right? So if you think about this as the iPhone, right? So let's just say this is the iPhone, right? And this is your Macintosh laptop, right? This is this is your laptop, right? So it's like when you cross-pollinate these two, you get the iPad, right? So it's the same concept. You guys see? So cross-pollinating basically means like mixing. mixing. In this case, basically what it means is mixing. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's actually a tough one. So once again, just like overarching. Just think about the concept behind the word, OK? Were you guys able to find, like, Shin, were you able to find, like, Japanese meanings to this? Or uh, Minsu, when you looked for a Korean meaning for cross-pollination, were you able to find it? Yeah, or probably. Quite. Were you able to find it? But did you understand it when you found the Korean word? Yeah. You understood it, right? When it's a connecting, two things coming together, right? Yeah. Shin, was it the uh, same in Japanese in your Denshiki show? Uh, okay, sure. Should I check? That's fine, you can check it later, but I'm just curious to see. Like later on you can tell me. I'm just curious to see what they would say about this. But it's a pretty simple idea. Sure, you, you might find that word in Korea, but yeah. sometimes it's different meaning. Or yeah. It's not common. Yeah, this is this is a word that it's not used to commonly. But remember one of the things I said at the beginning of the class. I want you guys, even if it's something that's uncommon, these are the types of words you guys are gonna come across as you read more and more business articles in English. And even in your native languages, in Korean and in Japanese, there's a lot of special terms, right, that are used in just business writing or mm -hmm. things like that, right? I mean, I mean, different meanings. Yeah, I mean, different meanings. And depending on what the article is talking about, that that's what tells you what the meaning is, right? What are some other words that you guys have trouble with? Hmm. Show me, would you? Kit, the developer's kit, OK. So kit, this one's easy, right? A kit is like a toolbox, 
right? A toolbox. Or sometimes it's even called a toolkit. So you know when something gets broken in your house, right? And you call the plumber, right? Or you call a carpenter, right? You know a carpenter comes with a box, right? And inside his box, right? You know, he has like a box like this, right? And inside the box, like, you know, he has like hammers, right? He has like nails. He has like a screwdrivers, right? So that's a toolbox, right? So what this is is like, you know how the Apple Store, right, has applications, right? So people actually create those applications. They're just like little games, right? People create those applications. So what they do is they give you an application creating kit, right? Application creating kit, right? And so what does that mean? It means that it's a toolbox. It's a set of tools, right? A set of tools. A set of tools for creating applications. Right? Does that make sense? See how it says, uh, uh, where is this? Oh, yeah. A software developer's kit for the App Store. So if you want to create an application, if you have an idea, right, to create a game, right, let's say a game or like an application that, let's say it's an application like there's one that's really useful. You know when you're having uh, dinner with your friends in the US? One that's for calculating tip. You have the number of people, you have what each person ordered, and then it just calculates each person's tip. So let's say, Kuo you have the idea that I want to, I think this could be useful and I want to create this application, right? Apple basically gives you a kit, right, to get you started, right? They give you like a basic program that you can run and you can start putting computer language together, right? It helps you create that application. But a kit basically is a set of tools, right? It's like a toolbox. That's really where the word kit comes from, OK? Any other ones? And on the last paragraph. OK. Um, Fleek or descendant. Can you, read the, can you read the sentence to me? Sleeper. Sleek. S-L-E-E-K-E-R. Ah, sleek or descendant. The whole sentence. OK, so, so, so this entire sentence, right? Yeah. The iPad isn't the first tablet, right? So you get that. Mm -hmm. That's pretty easy. Not even for Apple, right? So even for Apple, they created a tablet a long time ago. Mm -hmm. As the iPad is clearly, right? It clearly means like it's, it's obviously, mm -hmm. right? A sleeker descendant of the much maligned Newton. OK, let's, let's write this out. A sleeker, we're going to define all of these words, descendant of the much maligned Newton. I actually remember the Newton. I'm a little bit older than you guys, so like I actually kind of remember the Newton. So when something is sleek, right, that means it's like, it's like slim. It's very well designed. Remember the Zero S, the motorcycle? It has a sleek, athletic design. Something sleek means, and you guys can look up the exact meaning, but it means like slim, very well designed, like thin, slim. Something that's like very, very well designed, right? Descendant, this is probably, uh, this is a word you guys have seen before, right? Pedro, what does descendant mean? Decrease or go no, down? No, that's descends. Oh, this but, but, but it's the same, but okay. it's the same Maybe meaning, right? Okay. Shin, you are, oh, yeah, descendant. Yeah, meaning you are your grandfather's descendant. You came after him. You're his family, but you're his son's son, right? I am my great great grandfather's descendant. I'm his son's 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 son. Okay. Right? So like, you know, you guys are technically your parents' descendants. Right? Because you guys came after your parents. But you guys were born from your parents, right? So what this is saying is that this is the the iPad is a descendant of the Newton, right? What the iPad is is that when Apple started this, when, 